Okay, uh, first thing to do removing the uh, clutch is to take the adjuster off. So what's that? That's uh, we're back to UNF. That's a three quarter socket. Then we unscrew the adjuster completely. And here we have the special tool, which is absolutely essential for uh, removing the clutch. So that then screws in to where the adjuster was. Okay. I made sure the adjuster screwed pretty far in because it's going to be taking an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of tension and then I'm going to screw this right up tight Okay, so that should now be fully compressed and should now be able to release the diaphragm spring that goes all around the edge. But without that tool, you cannot release this diaphragm spring. Or at least if you do, you're in big trouble because it's just going to spring out. If you did manage to get it out at all, and it would just uh, do a lot of damage. Think it's coming out now. There. And the spring has come off with the, uh, or rather the circlip. I'm saying this is a spring. No, sorry. That's the circlip and this is the spring. It's a single uh, diaphragm spring. And so what we've done is, using this special tool, we've compressed the spring fully to allow the circlip uh, to come off. Sorry if I referred to this as a spring before. This is a circlip and this is the spring. But unless you put this special tool on the spring and put it like in, onto maximum deflection, uh, if you take, you take the circlip off, then this spring, bang, it's going to shoot out. And you don't really want that. So that's why it's essential, and I mean essential, to use this special tool to uh, take the clutch apart. So now it's off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now release this special tool to allow the spring to go back. And uh, you should be able to compare the position of the spring. You can see how dished the spring is now with the tool on it. Yeah, we'll compare that in a minute to how it looks uh, with the tool taken off it. Okay, and there, that is a spring now we've released the tool and it is convex, but the other way. Before, it was actually bent, dished this way round. Now it's actually dished outwards. Yeah, it was dished inwards before. That's how... You know, there's absolutely no way you can move that spring. That is so just strong, such a strong spring. And when, uh, and one uh, sort of uh, thing I've I have with this, I once, I think I was either putting, I think I was putting the clutch back on, and I couldn't get this, uh, I couldn't get the circuit, the big circuit, back round. I couldn't get it in. It just won't work. And basically, I simply hadn't done that tool up enough. And I just gave the tool another few turns, put it on like maximum, and then the circlip just popped straight in, no problem. So just be aware that's because that is such a huge spring and it, it does deflect such a long way. You really, especially putting it back on, you really have to screw that tool back in. Because obviously taking it off, it's already dished pretty much. 
and you just have to tighten it a bit. Putting it back on, yeah, you know, it's just the other way. Okay, so with that off, we should now be able to uh, remove the uh, clutch plates. Okie dokie, uh, we're going to remove the uh, clutch plates. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to take out the clutch push rod to begin with. But I am going to use my magnet to start removing the clutch plates. So we've got outer plate. Then we have a friction plate, non-friction plate. Friction plate. Good to use a magnet doing this. Non-friction plate. I'm just trying to keep things back in the same order. I think we'll almost certainly be changing these clutch plates. And then the last one. Oh no, it's not. That's uh, plain plate. Friction. Plain. Is that the last one? And then friction. Yeah. So friction is the last plate. And it's also the first plate is a friction after the outer plate. Because outer plate friction, and always remember it finishes with a friction plate. Okay. Then the next thing I want to do is to undo this nut. But we can't, I've removed the uh, locking from the com rods because of course, it's making no difference, just we've got the gearbox spinning. So we have another special tool, um, which I hope is going to work. I'll explain in a minute. So there's this tool that locks this clutch hub and enables us to take the nut off this end of the gearbox main shaft. Okay, this is our next special tool. This is the clutch hub uh, locking tool. And what it does is it goes into the hub like that. Uh, uh, kind of like that when I get it lined up. There. Then you screw this onto the end of the um, isoelastic mounting there, and then this go. This will go up. Thank you and it will lock against that and that means that everything is locked and can't move but of course in our case the uh, isolastic uh, bolt has been <laughs> sawn off so we can't do that so i have to take this off I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm going to jam it against the workbench at the bottom there and i'm hoping that that will be no sorry i don't know if you can see that i have to move this back down so the arm instead of being jammed up against the uh, ice elastics is jammed on the workbench of course the problem is that it, it can just lift when i do it it can just lift hop up and the and the arm will just carry on going round. but i'm hoping that using the impact driver the impact driver is uh, is so good. I get the right one. We're back to wit, yeah. We're back to wit now. So seven sixteenths wit. The impact driver, because it by its nature it is an impact driver, I think it should shock the nut off before before the engine can like jump up. We'll see. Either that, or there'll be a huge clatter as the engine jumps off the bench and we'll see no off it comes straight away that's a good thing about an impact driver you can get away with undoing a lot of nuts that aren't even locked um, you know it works so well so the nuts off then we've got a washer behind and then we've got the lock tab which i'll keep 
but obviously we will be replacing lock tabs later and then just remove the locking tool again a simple tool we've only used it for like 10 seconds but without it it's a bit of a nightmare because you you know you can't get that uh, clutch hub off the, the nut because everything's just turning how else are you going to lock it a bit of a nightmare but with this special tool straight off no problem that's why I saw it is worth investing in these tools because otherwise I mean without that tool I'd be there for about an hour trying to work out how to lock that hub and messing about and wasting time and probably breaking something <laughs>